Today's topics, several explosions in Ukraine, capital Kiev, U.S. lawmakers and visit Cuba. Joe Biden will announce support for African Union to join G20. Bob Sankarian, subscribe to this channel to incentivize us to keep bringing top quality geopolitical contents update across the world to you. Thanks for watching. Several explosions hit the Ukrainian capital today and Russia is moving to a new phase of this war. Ukraine shoots down many Iranian drones in Kiev. The United States is preparing to send the Patriot system to Ukraine and its battlefield. While a Russian commander says that nuclear weapons are probably the only option Russia has to win its wars against Ukraine, Patriot is designed to intercept incoming missiles. Russia has been uh, bombing Ukraine cities, destroying vital infrastructure and killing civilians in the process. Patriots would be of great support to Ukrainians to defend their country's sky. They will be able to more effectively defend against drones and low-flying aircraft. Iran or Iran is also going to send short-range ballistic missiles to Russia. Patriot is capable of dealing with uh, many different cha challenges and Ukraine faces especially ballistic missiles. And White House finally decided to accept Zelensky's request for the Patriot's defense system. Dmitry Medvedev, former president of Russia, says that providing Patriot system to Ukraine will increase the possibility of confrontation with the U.S. Putin's troops continue to struggle on the front line and for that reason, one of the Russian commanders, Alexander Khodorkovsky, the commander of one of the Donetsk paramilitary troops, says on Russian state TV that nukes are the only solution to win this war. Today, multiple explosions hit Kiev around 6 a.m. Ukrainian time. It's believed that two administrative buildings were damaged and authorities said that uh, the air defense system intercepted 10 Iranian-made Shahed 136 drones. Every fighting is happening in Bakhmut and around other settlements close to Bakhmut. The Dnipropetrovsk district has been under constant Russian shellings. Ukraine asked uh, its allies to send more weapons and they started the production of 122-152 mm shell to support front lines. They are working toward becoming less independent of their allies by manufacturing their own weapons. And Russia claimed that uh, they destroyed several ammunition and depots and IMARs in Ukraine. Many Russian citizens are fighting on the Ukrainian side and Russia is preparing to charge them with, uh, with treason. And many residents of Abaka, Abakan in the Republic of Kakassia were arrested for supporting Ukraine against their country, Russian Federation. They are facing up to 20 years in prison for treason. In Canada, Canada and Germany, they declared that they are going to send 167 million US dollars to help repair Ukrainian energy infrastructure damaged by Russian missiles. Many other countries have pledged over 1.6 billion dollars to help Ukraine survive the winter. It's a good thing. So, and U.S. lawmakers visit Cuba. So, three Democratic Party lawmakers visit Cuba on a diplomatic mission. If we remember about Cuba's situation with U.S., they met with Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canel and officials of that republic. Representative Mike Governor of Massachusetts, Troy Carter from Los Angeles, California, and Mark Hawken from Wisconsin. And Cuban president say that both sides discuss their differences in other topics and urge the U.S. to drop its sanctions against Cuba. President Barack Obama was the first president to normalize relations with Cuba and Donald Trump, after assuming power, later walked back all those policies created by Obama to suit his Cuban supporters in Florida, Miami. President Biden was expected to renormalize relations with Cuba but he has been slow to return to diplomacy with Cuba. Joe Biden said he will announce his support for African Union 
to join G20. So next week, President Biden will declare his support for the African Union to, to be admitted to G20 group of the world's largest economies as a permanent member. Biden met with African presidents uh, this week in Washington where he announced his support for Africa. Well, this is a place, uh, is a piece of good, good news, but we, 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 we still have a long way to go, all right? It's not a secret that we need more, more African voices on the international stage to have conversations about the global economy, climate change, health, injustices against Africans across the world, equality, democracy, and security. Senegalese President Macky Sall, which is African Union's chairperson, and South African President Cyril Ramaphosa are the pioneers of this plan to integrate Africa into the largest world economy forum, which is G20. South Africa is the only G20 member from Africa. I am Bob Sankarian. Thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe, like and share. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.